this is Barry and if you like any of my videos please subscribe and look what I came across on my way to Caddo Iron to get some metal for a project I'm working on this is a 1957 Dodge Cornet two-door sedan Recently, I was looking at a 1957 Imperial four-door hardtop, and the man told me it was a sedan. Well, here's how you can tell the difference between a sedan and a hardtop. On a sedan, part of the door forms a protective frame around the top of the window. And on a hardtop, there's nothing there over the window on the door. When you roll the window down, you just have open space. Let's see what's under the hood. If I can figure this out. No power brake booster here. No power steering, but it does have the original battery mat. No air conditioning. Looks like the Red Ram 325 cubic inch V8 with a two barrel, but in 1957, the Dodge Cornet could have also came with a inline flathead 230 cubic inch six cylinder engine. But the Red Ram 325 could have come with a four barrel carburetor. And also they made a version of the Red Ram 325 that came with two four barrel carburetors. But this car, if it would have had the D500 package, could have had a 354 Hemi called the Super Red Ram. Now that motor came with either one four barrel carburetor or two four barrel carburetors. I've had several um, old Chrysler Hemi powered cars. And the way this engine is built, it kind of reminds me of a Hemi block without the Hemi heads. It's so similar in some ways that the intake manifold off of the early Hemis, I'm pretty sure, will fit this motor. Which means if you can find a four barrel or two four barrel carburetor intake manifold off of an early Hemi, it should fit this engine. And also there may be a chance that you can get a high performance aftermarket two four barrel intake manifold also. This is an old catalog from the 70s, but you may still be able to get this intake manifold from this company. For those of you who aren't concerned about the originality of automotive antiquities, this motor actually is a pretty great design. It's an early poly engine, or 
semi hemi and with the proper intake manifold exhaust system and a cam and carburetor or carburetors this could be a real screaming monster of a power plant and still be the original engine that came with the car when thinking about these early Chrysler poly engines or semi hemis think about say for example canted valves and big block Chevrolets or the Ford 351 Cleveland except Chrysler came out with that design 10 years earlier than they did. Now this engine that you see here with an upside down fuel filter is the second version of the poly engine that Chrysler designed. I believe they called it the um, A block engine and I remember one time seeing a guy who came across a very well preserved 1959 Dodge Coronet that had this particular type of engine except it didn't have two four barrel carburetors but it ran good and he decided that this engine was just too hard to get parts for so he decided to take this engine out a perfectly good original engine and put a later model motor in there well in my younger days fooling around with these old Chryslers from the late 50s we didn't have the internet to go track down parts we went to a bookstore and came across magazines or books about antique cars and we found advertisements where you could send off through the mail or call these companies and they would send you a catalog for antique car parts and here are just a couple of examples of some of the catalogs I still have from those days and these companies are still in business today they sell complete engine rebuild kits carburetor rebuild kits fuel pumps um, water pumps all kind of stuff for these engines There's the clamp that would have held the breather on top of the carburetor. Now let's take a look at the condition of the interior. Looks like this baby had 78,000 miles. This car was kind of futuristic for its time. It had a segmented light bar speedometer.
This is what they call the transmission push button control unit. In 1956, the Chrysler Corporation introduced the push button controlled two speed automatic called the Power Flight. And starting in 1957, an optional alternative was the new three speed automatic the torque flight. Now these late 50s Chrysler automatic transmissions did not have a parking gear. When you came to a stop you would push the neutral button then you would grab the parking brake handle and pull it out and it would automatically lock in place. Actuating a cable leading to a brake drum that was on the end of the transmission tail shaft. When releasing the parking brake, you would simply turn the handle to the left and push it back in. The push button control unit was a pretty interesting feature on these cars. I happen to have a leftover from my earlier years playing with these cars. I still have a spare neutral push button from a 1957 Chrysler Imperial. And when you turned your lights on at night, these push buttons would illuminate. And this car came with the three speed automatic because you can see the first gear button, the second gear button, and the drive button, which would have been third gear. I don't have a picture of a two speed push button box configuration but it basically would have had the three buttons on top and there would have been one large button on the bottom for the first gear and then the drive button would have been the second gear. These points are obvious but the three speed automatic cars had a feature that's not always so obvious to people today. The three speed automatics came with a push button start. The ignition switch was different it had a accessories position and a on position. It did not have a start position. When you got the ignition switch to the on position, you would push the neutral push button and it had a spring loaded switch that would start the motor. I've noticed a funny thing over the years when I would come across these cars, you know, in a vacant lot or back in the woods somewhere. The cars that had three speed automatics would sometimes either have the ignition switch completely missing or dangling from under the dash as you see here. And I kind of have a theory that a lot of people who aren't familiar with late 50's Chryslers will just assume that there's something wrong with the ignition switch. It will have the accessories position, the on position but no start. So they, they must assume that there's just something wrong with the ignition switch and they need to remove it. Here's the breather laying in the front seat here and perhaps the carburetor is back in the trunk somewhere as well. Let's see what the condition is underneath the car.
I understand that this is not a feature rich or a super desirable model for this year of car, but it has a lot going for it. It has a fairly intact floor still, and I've seen cars like this much, much worse. For example, this 1957 Plymouth. I've seen people take a car like that with sheet metal working skills, bring a car like that back to its former glory. I was checking on Amazon to see if I could find a few parts for this car, and I searched on Amazon 1957 Dodge Cornet parts. And about the 19th page, I actually found replacement rocker panels for this car. If this car wound up in the hands of someone that really loves this car and they want to see it restored to its former glory and they have decent sheet metal working skills, could bring this car back to its former glory. That would be a very enjoyable thing to see. This could once again be a very fine and beautiful automobile for someone to enjoy. It's kind of an unusual car these days here in 2022, which young and old alike would enjoy to see driving down the highway. I worry the city may come tow this car several blocks away where there's a scrap metal yard where they crush cars like this and I would hate to see that happen. I'm sure all my fellow car people out there would agree with me when I say that would be a very sinful thing for them to do. Maybe the right person will wind up with his car before something like that happens. Thank you for watching.